said to me, Pastor, we're amazed that you can get so many sermons <laughs> from Psalms 23. After all, there are only six verses in this psalm. What amazes me is that the shepherd king, the sweet psalmist of Israel, David himself, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, could actually pack so much in six verses that a few sermons could come out the six only requires prayer and diligence but it is masterful to me how the shepherd king David recorded in vivid detail an entire year in the life of a sheep in just six verses. What a song. If brevity indeed is the soul of wit, if that's true, then David was one of the wisest men to ever live because he said a lot in just six verses. We've been talking about the rod. Said thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We haven't got to the staff yet, and I want to talk to you just a little more about the rod, and then hopefully we'll move to the staff and, or do whatever the Lord says. But we've been talking about this club. The rod is about approximately two feet long, carefully made by its possessor, a sapling bottom where the sapling and the root comes together that forms the basis of the club, the rod and it is carefully shaped and wheedled away and shaven and it's designed to fit the shepherd's hand so each rod would be a little different my rod would fit my hands your rod would fit yours and the rod is both and we've talked about this, an offensive and a defensive weapon is used to ward off coyotes, wolves, cougars, stray dogs. David even fought the lion and the bear with his bare hand, more than likely his bare hand actually with his rod. Remember when the Lord told uh, Moses to lift up his hands, Moses lift up his rod. It was, they, they were interchangeable because the rod became a intricate part of the shepherd's hand. He became so good at it. I read a story one time where a, a shepherd was uh, clearing brush and they were trying to move a boulder. And the boulder was quite heavy. And so they finally removed the boulder. And as they removed the boulder, there was a coiled cobra ready to strike. The shepherd with amazing speed and accuracy without hesitation took his rod and bam hit the snake and killed it. What was interesting is uh, to the, on, the observer was that the shepherd did not have to go and get his rod. He didn't have to go and find the rod. Even when they were, were removing the boulder he had his rod in his hand. The rod is always present. So the rod is like the extension of the shepherd's arm. Are you with me? The shepherd used the rod both to protect himself and the flock. It's often used to beat the bushes, to beat the brush. He would walk through and beat the brush uh, so as to disturb and discourage snakes and any other creatures that would be hiding in the brush. 
I think we talked about this the last time, that the rod was also a discipline, a weapon of discipline and correction, the recalcitrant beast, the stubborn sheep that would get out of line, that would misbehave. The shepherd would throw its rod and hit the sheep in such a way where the sheep would get in line, or if he saw the sheep about to eat a poisonous plant, he was so handy with the rod that he could discourage the sheep and he knew how to throw it without killing him to keep the sheep from eating something that would kill it. How does it apply to us? Application from spiritually speaking, the rod is God's spoken word. It carries the convicting power and the irrefutable impact of thus saith the Lord. When we speak what God says, that's power. That's influence. I was telling you something I didn't finish. I said that uh, the uh, jihadists used a truck. I said last week that Paul didn't deal with the inanimate things, but the conditions of men's heart. See, if you take the gun away, then what are we going to do now? Take away the trucks. There's been at least four instances where they've used trucks to kill people. And part of their playbook is if you don't you have a gun, use a knife. If you don't have a knife, use a truck. If you don't have a truck, use a car, whatever. It's not the instrument. It's the heart. Jesus said men would kill you and think that they do God's service. So we can't take, can't, Fight this battle by taking away instruments. We've got to preach Jesus. And we've got to stand on the rod of God, his word. Amen. The scriptures are his rod. Scriptures spoken in context are the rod of God. Let me give you an example. Let me show you a, a good usage of the rod. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. I won't spend much time on this. You can read it when you get home. Matthew 4, the Bible says, Then Jesus led up into the, uh, uh, of the Spirit, verse 1, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Satan tempted him with three major temptations after our Lord had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says in verse 2, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. So he's physically weak. He's extremely hungry. And before he can eat, here comes the devil. Here comes Lucifer himself. Not a demon. Not Beelzebub. Not any of his lieutenants, but Lucifer himself tempts our Lord. The Lord hadn't eaten in 40 days, and the Bible says 40 nights. Verse 3 says, and when the tempter came unto him, then he began to tempt him. But notice in verse 4, our Lord's response to the tempter's temptation. First clause and he answers, speaking of our Lord, and says, it is written. He employs the rod of God. He quotes written scripture. In verse 7, Jesus said unto him, this is after the second temptation, it is written again. Notice, he employs the rod. The rod is God's word, Spoken. Uh, and in verse 10, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, that is, get behind me. Why? What gives me the authority to put the devil behind me? For it is written. Isn't that amazing? We cannot defeat Satan with maxim. We cannot defeat Satan with folklore. We cannot 
defeat the devil with our own thoughts, our own mind, and our own way. We can only wage successful war against Satan with the word of the Lord. Demons tremble when we use the word. Disease has to dry up. Unless it's just God's will for you to go home, disease has to dry up when the word of the Lord is employed. God said this about his word. In Isaiah 55 and 11, he says, So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. When we use the word of God, the word of God simply, my friends, can not fail. The word of God is the Lord's rod. Amen. And if you want to win, say what God says. If you want to pray a powerful prayer that moved the Lord, pray his word. Amen. If you want to know where, where to stand, on social issues, resort to the word. What does the Bible say? The Bible says this. What say you? The Bible is right. And every believer should trust as never before the word of the Lord. Can I get a strong amen on that? Second Timothy tells us something and uh, we got to do it. If we're going to defeat the enemy, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says this to the believer, study. Study. Do you hear me up a room? I know you're busy. I know we have busy lives. We have jobs. We have kids. Oh, my. We have sports. We have entertainment. We're busy people. We've got to be here. We've got to be there. We have so much to do. And yet, the Bible says, regardless of how busy you are, study. To what degree? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, listen to this, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is, accurately handling the word of truth. But notice this, but shun profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Watch worldly language. Watch worldly talk. Praise the Lord. Don't specialize in all of the nomenclature of the world. Whatever Hollywood comes out with, that's what we say. We, we embrace all of the, the humanistic talk. I was watching a commercial and the late Jim Valvano uh, said this, there are three things you should do, should do each day. And he says one is laugh and the other uh, is what? They say cry and a third one is think. And I thought to myself, here's a man who's dying of cancer. Just a few days left in his life. And that's the best that he could come up with. Laugh, cry, and think. Perhaps it would have been better had he said, pray in the moment. Just don't, if you just don't know anything else to do, uh, whisper another prayer at noon. I think he would have been better off had he said, then whisper a prayer in the evening. Lord, that will keep your heart in tune. People grab hold to these meaningless, powerless ineffective sound bites. I'm not indicting him, but I'm trying to tell you something. 
Cancer don't shrug from laughter. You're facing some of these conditions that life can present. Praise the Lord. Some secular saying won't get you through. You need to know how to grab hold to the word of God at the drop of a hat and say, loose here, Satan. The Bible says this. I'm looking at all of this killing and I hear Isaiah 54 ringing in my head. No weapon. that is formed against thee shall prosper. Praise the Lord. Somebody talk to me about my enemy, but every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, Isaiah says, thou shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, for their righteousness is of me. It's something to be said about standing on the word of God and knowing how to at the drop of a hat say what God says. You don't want to be in a bad place and say, well, let me try to find the pastor. Let me get the first lady on the phone. Let me see if I can't find the district, district missionary. Excuse me. Maybe someone can give me a scripture. No, 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 no. You got to know something. You got to have something on the inside. You got to know how to rightfully, uh, rightly divide, uh, can, can I get a witness here? The word of truth. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 13 says this, For everyone that is you, everyone that use milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Praise the Lord, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to, to them that are of full age, mature even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to, to discern both good and evil. See, I don't want to be unskillful in the word of righteousness. You don't want to be unskillful in the word of righteousness. You want to be skilled. Praise the Lord. You want to know how to use your rod. Praise the Lord. Your, your child may get sick. They may get, they may get something hung in their throat. You, oh, my. That, a heart attack may happen. Praise the Lord. Something may happen while you're out on the road if there's no time to contact anyone else. You got to have a word on the inside. The devil respects the word of God. Satan doesn't respect Maxim. Satan doesn't respect catchy uh, phrases. Satan respects and has to bow to the word of God. Can I get a witness in here? What a mighty God we serve. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout, I'm going to use the word. Speak the word over your children. Speak the word over your pocketbooks. Speak the word over your body. My God, speak the word. The devil's been afflicting you. You ought to declare, I'm going to live and not die. That's what the Bible said. You're struggling and you've been going through and the devil trying to take your mind. You ought to just tell him, I'm not going crazy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning and I just believe that if I just hold on morning time is gonna come but see if you don't know it if you hadn't read it if you if you hadn't studied uh, the word of the Lord then you won't know how to cope when life gets hard when there's so much upheaval and unrest all this talk about transgender and stuff like that God made them male and God made them female, period. And God has never given man permission to change that. 
And anybody who tries to change it, they, uh, it's a futile effort. You're just a, uh, 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 a mangled, botched jaw. Praise the Lord. You're still a man. I don't care what you cut off. You're still a woman. I don't care what they... Whatever. God made them male. God made them female. Uh, Monique. Yeah. And she's out there. Her and her husband. They have what is called... I hadn't found that in the Bible. An open marriage. They don't have one from Genesis through Revelation. And uh, in their marriage, she said her husband gave her permission to sleep with other men. So then she's not cheating. Since he gave her permission. What should have been said to her is, you're not cheating. If cheating only means slipping. I'm going to let that sink in just for a minute. You're not cheating. If cheating only means slipping. And creak, creeping. But I never read in the Bible what God gave a wife permission. Well, that was one time and it didn't work. Sarah told Abraham. Go into Hagar. He did what she said. She got pregnant and had a child. God came back and said, uh, 17 years later. First of all, the Lord didn't say anything else to him. 17 years. Number one, walk before me and be perfect. Then the Lord showed up and said, guess what? A little while later, said uh, the bond woman and her child, both of them got to go. Sarah didn't have authority to do what she did. Human beings can't rewrite what God have written. Can I get a witness? Praise the Lord. You you don't have that power, so. This is why you got to grab hold to the Bible. I remember one time George Bloomer was interviewing uh, Azusa, Carlton Pearson. And Carlton said to George, Bishop Bloomer, so many homosexuals have come to me and said that they don't want to be fornicating. They want to get married so that they won't have to fornicate. And as uh, soon as he said that, the Holy Ghost spoke to my mind. Paul said, it is true. It is true that to avoid fornication, it is true. The Bible does say, get mad. On that part, Carlton was right. But when you go a little deeper, you see where he missed it. For the Bible says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every uh, wife have her own husband. He didn't say, let every man have his own man. And every woman have her own woman. It's still got to be husband and wife. But, but, but you got to know the word of the Lord right off the top of your head so that these things will not confuse you. 
Can I get a witness? Somebody shout, the Bible is right. Okay, Rocky, we, I've been up long enough. Let's, let's get ready here because I don't know. Up room, don't, don't holler say amen like they used to. But I heard, I want to talk to you about one more interesting use of the rod. And then after I deal with this, maybe a Tuesday night, I can talk to you about the staff. But another interesting use of the rod was that the rod was used to examine uh, and count the sheep. Thank you, Jesus. It was called passing under the rod. Ezekiel chapter 20. Are you praying with me? 20 and uh, 37 says, And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bound of the covenant. What does pass under the rod mean? How does this process work? Here's how the process works. View in your mind a flock of sheep. And the sheep are in the fold. The shepherd would go to the door of the sheepfold and open the door and he would take each sheep out individually one by one. As one stepped out, the shepherd would hold out the rod and that sheep had to walk underneath the rod and be counted. But not only would it be counted, but it would be examined. Are you with me? You see, he brought them out so that he could examine them. And check this out. He would examine them firsthand. It would be a firsthand, intimate examination. And the shepherd, and remember, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd would do the examination. In examining the sheep, the shepherd would check the sheep for disease, wounds, defects. Would check to make sure there are no blood-sucking ticks on the sheep or any kind of parasites that could lodge on the sheep. And uh, now remember, the sheep carried wool, and the wool would get very thick. So the shepherd would take its rod, and divide the wool. See, because sheep were thin-skinned thin -skinned creatures. And would divide the wool so that he could closely examine the skin. Experience this message in its entirety by calling toll-free 877-463-3477 to purchase your copy in CD or DVD format. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God first day.